Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Recently, Pastor Benny Hinn conducted powerful miracle services at Family Christian Center in Munster, Indiana. Steve Muncy hosted this great event with the assistance of more than 60 local pastors. One of the highlights for the standing room only audience from the Chicagoland area and throughout the Midwest occurred during the first service as Pastor Benny introduced Prophet Brian Karn to minister. You have a very precious and I do want to emphasize precious gift. Viewers of This Is Your Day have become familiar with Brian Karn as his incredible prophetic anointing has been presented during recent programs. And I say that he prepare yourself for the days ahead. But now you shall begin to see my hand move, and even that thing concerning business that you desire God to favor. God said, I'm getting ready to open a door of increase into your hands, and I will cause my favor to Terry, 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 is that Bass? Bass. What's your last name? Bass. All right. God's getting ready to blow your mind. This is your hour of visitation. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody say, hey. When I just touched you, the Lord said, tell, look like I heard Janet. What's your name? Janet. Lift your hands. He said, just like I ordained Michael to fight, I want you to fight, Michael. What's your name? Michael. Lift your hands. I'm looking at this spirit, and this spirit has a whole bunch of wood in his hands. I see wood. I see wood. I, huh? That's my last name. Your last name is what? Wood. Lift your hands. Stay tuned, because the prophetic word you're about to hear can radically revolutionize your life. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, my people are taking my name in vain. I said, your people? He said, yes. He said, you do it too. I said, yeah, they do it, but I don't do it, Lord. I'm super saved. I don't take your name in vain. He said, son, you and the church, they take my name in vain. I say, how? He said, what's my name? I said, Jesus. You know, Matthew 1, 21, say, for thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. That's his saving name. He has a lot of names, but his saving name is Jesus. Acts 4 and 12 declares, neither is there salvation in any other, other than the name of Jesus. But he said, no. I said, okay. I said, well, how about Jehovah Jireh? He said, well, read your Bible. He said, I know you call me Jehovah Jireh, but if you listen, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Which means out of every situation is a revelation of who God is. But that's not his name. I said, well, what's your name? He said, well, all the things you call out are names that people gave me. He said, but only in one place in Exodus chapter 3 is when I gave myself a name. I said, okay. I say, what did you say your name was? He said, I told Moses to tell him, I am that I am. I said, okay, that sounds good, that's real good, that's real wonderful, all right, but how in the world are we taking your name in vain because your name I am? He said, tell my people, every time you say I am sick, you take my name in vain. Every time you say I am broke, you take his name in vain. That's why he said, let the weak say I am. Let the poor say I am. Now you need to shout like increase is about to come to you. Come on, shout. All right, now, sit down, sit down, sit down. We almost there, we almost there. Listen, I, I, I get excited when I think of the goodness of Jesus. When I think about what's getting ready to happen in my life, I get excited because my worst days are over and my best days are... All right, you ready? All right, now say this now. You shall have whatever you... You shall have whatever you... You shall have whatever you... 
All right. You are speaking spirit. Remember that now. If you don't say it, you'll never see it. You've got to change the way you talk. You have to change what comes out of your mouth. I don't care what it looks like. You never say what the enemy says. You say what God said. Isaiah 53 and 5 said, but he was wounded for our transgression. Bruised by iniquities. Now, 3 John 2 say, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your I want you to catch this because the Spirit of God began to speak to me and he said, some things are going to get worse in America. But just because things get worse in the world doesn't mean it has to get worse for you. That while everybody is losing their mind, he's going to keep you in perfect peace. Isaiah 26 and 3. Because your mind is what? Stayed on him. Are y'all listening to me? Now I want you to hear me. Things are going to get worse. Now I'm, I'm going to give you this prophetic word. You may not receive this. Social security is not your source. The government is not your source. Your job is not your source. Slap your neighbor and say, God is my source. You didn't say that right. Come on, tell them, God is my source. So I'm telling you that things are going to get worse. Jobs are going to begin to fold. People that have been up in power are going to begin to come down. But there is a people that will not be affected by the world system. Because we don't live according to that system. We live according to the word of God. Which says in Philippians 4 that my God shall supply all my Now say this with power, say more than enough. All right, I feel faith coming in the room now. Somebody in here, every debt you got, God's getting ready to pay it off. So I want you to say this with power. Come on, say more than enough. Say too much. Overflow. It's coming to my house. When? 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 Call out your address so I know where to come to. Call your name so they know who to make the check out to. Now shout like you already got it. Now listen. Now listen. My life changed one day. When I obeyed a prophet. Hosea 12 and 13 declares, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Whenever God is getting ready to transition your life, he sends a prophet. I've heard it like this before. The difference of seasons, Brother Mike Murdoch says, the difference of seasons in your life is connected to a person. So whenever God, whenever God shifts a person's life, he connects them to the prophetic. Psalm 105, 17 says, he sent a man, even Joseph, whose feet they hurt with feathers, he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. He received one word from God, and that one word changed his life. You don't, you don't need nobody to talk to you for 2,000 hours. One word can change your life. I, 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 I told people this that a couple of months ago, maybe last year sometime, they were celebrating Apostle Hinton's birthday. And somebody got up and said, we want everybody to give $500. I said, me? You want everybody? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest. Can I be honest? Yeah. I didn't feel the Spirit tell me to give it 
didn't nothing come on me to give it. And to be honest with you, I really gave it because I knew everybody was watching me. So I had to give it. I'm just being honest with you. But it's impossible to put a seed in the ground and not get back a harvest. So this is what I do. This is what I do. This is what I do. So I, I sold a $500 seed. I give it. And I leave out and I'm riding in the car and I do this little thing that God told me to do. I heard it from this man and I do it. And when I do it, it works. I talk to money because money can hear. Yeah. What? Money can hear? Yeah, money can hear. Ecclesiastes 10, 19 say it answers. Yeah. If money answers, that means it can hear. And not only does money answer, look at somebody and say, money talks. So I, I speak to money and I tell money, money, come to me now. Somebody say, money, money. cometh. Uh-uh, 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 yeah, that, that don't do it, that don't do it, that don't do it. Now you got to do it right. Say, money, money. cometh money. to me money. now. So that's what I did, right? That's what I did. And I was, I was in Chicago, and I had a conference I needed to pay for. A week and a half later, I was in Louisiana, and a woman walked up to me in the service and said, Prophet Khan. I said, yeah. She said, do you mind if I give you right now $50,000 cash? I said, ma'am, you never have to ask me for permission. <laughs> never, never. I was in St. Louis, Missouri, walked up to a woman and prophesied to her and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have something to tell you. But God told me, this time, this is the only time he's ever told me this. I said, the Lord told me, I cannot tell you until you put a seed in my hand. She said, well, how much? I said, you want the truth? She said, yeah. I said, the Lord told me to tell you to give $10,000 to put in my hand right now. She said, well, I guess I ain't going to hear what the Lord got to say. <laughs> I said, I understand. I said, you know, you know God talks to me. She said, yeah. I said, trust me. She put the seed in my hand and I said, thus saith the Lord, the next six months will be the worst six months of your life. She said, I need my $10,000 back then. I said, but thus saith the Lord, in the seventh month, you're coming to $13.2 million. She gave the seed the fourth and the fifth month. It got so bad. That she was living inside of a car, lost everything. Called Prophet Karn and said, hey, yeah. I said, what's up? She said, I need a cash advance on my miracle. <laughs> I said to her, if I give you the money, I interrupt your process. But let me encourage you. I said, let me give you this word. If the hell I told you you was going to go through is coming to pass. The blessing got to be on the other side. Gets to the seventh month. Gets to the seventh month. Her daddy dies. But her dad lived in another country. She was raised by her mother. And her mother never let her have a relationship with her father. Long story short, the daddy died. Left her as the beneficiary of over about two or three hundred acres in another country. The government had been trying to get this land for some time, but the father would never sell it. They said, we want your land. She said, I'm not giving away all my land. They said, we don't want it all. We just want this portion. She said, make me an offer. They said, we're going to offer you $13.2 million. Everybody say, hey. One more thing. I was in Fort Pierce, Florida. Walked up to a woman and said, thus saith the Lord. The Lord told me to tell you to give everything in your account right now except for $10. She said, he told you that. <laughs> I said, yeah. She said, well, what I get? I said, he's going to make you a millionaire in seven days. I don't get them words all the time now, but when I get some, I get some. I said, he's going to make you a millionaire in seven days. I say, I, I say before this week, you would be a millionaire. So she takes the check, takes a long time to do it, but she finally writes it. <laughs> she come and lay it at the feet, and I give her the money, and I, I give her my number, and I say, call me when you get your money. Instead of her calling me when she got it, she called me every night to let me know she didn't have it. 
That was on a Sunday night, Pastor. Monday night she called. She said, I ain't got it. Tuesday night she called. She said, I still ain't got it. She said, Wednesday night. She said, I don't have it. Thursday night, I'm nervous now. Because as a prophet, when you're in the spirit, you know God said it. But when you get in the flesh, you go to wondering. So Friday, she said, I still ain't got it. Saturday, I tell God, Lord, the banks close at 12, 1, 2 o'clock. Whatever you're going to do, you need to hurry up and do it now. She called me Saturday. She said, you is a false prophet. I said, I am. She said, yeah. I said, why? She said, I ain't got no money. She said, what to do? I said, um. <laughs> she said, I'm going to go get my last $10 out of the bank. I said, God be with you. <laughs> I got on my knees to pray. And if you're in here and you're an intercessor, there's something in prayer where a peace will come on you. I got on my knees to pray, and I couldn't pray. Just a peace came over me. She called me back 45 minutes later, screaming. I said, what you screaming for? She said, I went to get my last $10 out of the bank. I said, well, praise the Lord. She said, but you don't know what just happened. I said, I don't know. Tell me. She said, when I got back my bank statement, it said I have $1,010,000. She said, what to do? I said, get as much of it out as you can right now. Because ain't no guarantee it's going to be there tomorrow. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But I want to prophesy to you, God's about to give you divine increase. Money about to show up and you ain't going to know where it came from. If you believe it, jump on your feet and shout, it's on the way. I feel a strong anointing of increase in here. I, I, I'll tell you, I don't feel this kind of anointing all the time for, for what I'm about to say, but I'm telling you, you that have great debts, God's getting ready to pay that stuff out. I, and that's a word for you, Pastor Muncie. There's an anointing in here for debt cancellation. Now, now, see, I need you to catch it. Stop trying to figure out how. That's where you miss it. You keep trying to figure out how. God, God made a raven come and feed Elijah. God is getting ready to make people bless you that don't even like you. He's getting ready to prepare a table in the presence of your enemies and you're going to eat some good food. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. Y'all ready? Come on, don't play with this now. Don't play with this. Because when you do this, angels are released to go get your... There it is. Money! Coming to me. Shout like you already got it. Wait, 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 wait. Not money come. Not money come. Come at. We need a constant flow. Because there's some stuff we need to do for the kingdom. Come on, there's some hospitals we need to build for the kingdom. Come on, y'all, they say, there's some churches and places we need to build for the kingdom. It ain't never the will of God for us to have the struggle with increase. When you get home, I want you to read this. When you go to Joel chapter 2, read it when you get home. He said, your vats going to overflow at all. He said, I'm going to restore to you the years that the king weren't upon. He said, all of that, right? And watch this, watch this. After, now, all of that is prosperity. Then it says, and it shall come to pass after that I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You missed it. The prosperity came before the miracles. We messed up. We got the miracles, but we never got the money. But now we're going to get the money so we can do stuff all over the world. Come on. God, I don't, I, 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 there it is. Come on. Hold your hand. I, hold, come on. Look at your left and your right. Say, this is it. This is it. Come on. Tell somebody, this is it. Come on. Say, every debt I have is about to be paid off. Money. to me shout about it
After those in attendance at this Benny Hinn Miracle Service at Family Christian Center in Munster, Indiana, enthusiastically responded to the opportunity Brian Karn presented to them, the prophetic anointing was displayed with power and accuracy. You prophesied to us in uh, 2011 at Sweet Holy Spirit Church. Really? What I told you? You told us that we were going to get a house, and a week later we went looking, and we got the house. And you said we were going to get another house, and we're living in that second house now. Wow. Well, I want to prophesy to you again. That you're going to move again. And the Spirit of Grace told me to tell you tonight when you get home. 15427. What is that? That's our address. Huh? That's our address. That's your address. When you get home tonight, heaven is going to meet you there. Come on, clap your, yeah! clap your hands for the release in here. Receive. Yay. I don't know you, but the Lord spoke to me when I just looked at you over there. He began to say to me something very clearly. He told me that your life is in a major transition. And you become very frustrated with where you are. But from your mother's womb, look like I heard the Lord say, Sean, Sean, Sean. What's your name? Sean. Lift your hands. From your mother's womb, my hand has been upon thy life. And I've chosen you. There's a lot of Sharons. Yeah, but there's only one Sharon Blakely. Come to me. I see in the realm of the spirit that the enemy plans for February the 18th to cause an attack to hit your body. I'm looking at a street called Hickory Court. Hickory, is that where you live? Okay. And I'm looking at the house number two. What's your address? Two Hickory Court. Lift your hands. And I see a plan of the enemy at that home to cause a sickness to hit you on the 18th of February. But because you came here tonight, the plan of the enemy has been disrupted. Whoa. Hey! Somebody screaming here like you got. Scream! I said, I said, scream! That was a powerful service there in Indiana and I'm telling you I, I can tell you from experience of me being there the anointing was so strong and God just had me to challenge the people to to elevate their faith and to put them to a place they've never been before I told you that I believe that my assignment to the body of Christ is twofold to sanitize the prophetic and to get supernatural divine increase into our hands some of you don't believe it that's fine but I'm crazy I believe that God could cause you to live like you've never lived before I believe that when you minister under the anointing and when you give God your life, he said no good thing. I believe that Psalm 84, 11, will he withhold from you if you walk upright. Walk upright before him. Now under that anointing, God told me to challenge 70 people. That, that was at that service. He told me to challenge 70 people. You know, Jesus had a big multitude, then he had 70, then he had the 12. But there's some about that 70 because he sent them out two by two and they went around the world and ministered and witnessed and God used them, especially to the Jerusalem. I want to tell you right now why this anointing is flowing and that same anointing that was there. I don't never want you to look at something and say, oh, I wish I was there. You don't have to wish you were there. You're there right now. There's no distance in the spirit. That same anointing that was there in Indiana is the same anointing that is here right now. I ministered to that dear woman and God removed sickness from hitting her home. Ministered to even Pastor Muncie about something that was going to come to pass and I heard it happen the next day. I mean, testimony after testimony and miracle after miracle has come to pass and I'm telling you, if I was you, if, if, if we were to switch seats and I was watching this program, I would be at the edge of my seat saying, Lord, tell me what must I do to tap into this favor? I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Right now, while that anointing is flowing and while the presence of God is moving, I'm going to pray for you because seven is the number of completion. 
It's the number of it is so and it is done. It's the number of perfection. I'm going to pray for you. And then this is what I want you to do. Honor God. Are you ready? Father, thank you for that increase. Saints, I want to pray, but I feel that anointing now. The Lord just told me to tell you what to do right now. A $70 seed. Call that number on the screen. And so a $70 seed. Every person, matter of fact, I, I said in that service it was 70 people, but I want to say there are 700 people who are watching me. I just got ready to pray, and the Lord said, you know, do it now. 70 people, 700 people, so that $70 seed. The Lord is speaking to you, give 700. If somebody may want to give 7,000, it's your choice. But I know for sure, as the Lord told me that woman's name that you just watched, as the Lord gave me that woman's address you just watched, as I ministered to that couple about the home they would get, you just watched. As sure as I know his voice speaking to me, that's how sure I am. That you need to sow that $70 seed. Your life is getting ready to change. I'm excited because I know I'm looking at a future millionaire. I'm looking at a future financier for the kingdom. Not money for you to get your hair done and drive nice cars and live in a big house. Nothing wrong with it, but that's not the purpose. That the gospel may be preached. That people may receive deliverance all over the world. That the poor might be clothed, that the hungry might be fed, the naked may be clothed, that people's lives will be changed because of the preaching of the gospel. If I was you, don't miss it. Dial that number on the screen because God is getting ready to blow your mind. I'm excited. I feel it in my spirit. Something good, something awesome is taking place in your life right now. Don't hesitate. Receive that anointing. Follow those instructions. It's yours now. God bless. Pastor Benny invites you to follow him on Facebook and Twitter. Go to the ministry homepage and click on the link. Stay informed as Pastor Benny is personally sending regular updates about what God is doing around the world. Precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Pastor Benny Hinn's recent series of miracle services in Sydney, Australia featured overflow audiences, faith-building ministry from the Word of God, and astonishing demonstrations of Jesus' healing presence and power. The prophetic gift was also in great evidence as Brian Karn was asked by Pastor Benny to minister in these services. And in just a few moments, you'll witness this anointing and experience a powerful word delivered directly to you. But first, let's join the Wednesday morning service where Brian Karn shared a message which Pastor Benny believes will build your faith and significantly impact your life. Come on, say, God wants me blessed. Look at your neighbor, say, God wants you blessed. Third John 2 declares, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest what? Prosper. This is God talking. God says through John to Gaius, Beloved, I would above all things. This is the desire of God for your life. My desire is for you to prosper. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants me to prosper. Now, prosperity is nothing missing, nothing broken. 
you're completely whole, you're completely satisfied. As the man of God said last night, there's nothing lacking and no one lacking among you. The word of God says, beloved, I would above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. So first of all, that lets me know I never have to ask myself, is it the will of God for me to prosper? I don't have to pray about that. I don't have to go on a fast. I don't have to go on a three-day consecration and say, Lord, if you want me to be healed, heal me. He already told me that I would, above all things, that thou mayest what? Prosper and be in good health. Even. Even. Now, even is a mathematical term. It means I, I want it to be congruent to the prosperity of your soul. Which means my physical prosperity, my spiritual prosperity, my financial prosperity is connected to the prosperity of my soul. So now I need to find out exactly what my soul is. And we know that the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. Which means that in order for me to walk in everything God wants me to walk in, I must change the way I think. Because Proverbs 23 and 7 declares, as a man thinketh. So is he. You will never live above your thought life. If it's not in your mind, it'll never be in your future. You cannot think in the basement and live in the attic. Am I making sense? However you think, that's how you're going to operate. So the word of God says in Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living what? Sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? You ought to read your Bible sometime. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your... Look at your neighbor say, get your mind right. So nothing will happen in your life until you change the way you think. All right, now, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 lets us know something. Now unto him that is able. That, that scripture really upset me. You know, I, 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 I was pretty smart in school, salutatorian of my class, and it, 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 it seemed like King James was wrong. Because he said, now unto him that, when proper English should have been, now unto him who is able. Because the him makes it a person. But he said, now unto him that. So I had a talk with God and I said, Lord, King James wrote the Bible wrong. <laughs> and he said, no. I say, well, it should not be that. It should be who, because he said, now unto him, and the who is there, it should be that. That's wrong. I was just talking to him, you know. And he said, the reason the scripture was written like that was because, remember in Exodus, when I said, who shall I tell him sent me in Exodus chapter 3? I said, yeah. I said, what did you say? He said, remember I said, I am that I am. I said, that's some good stuff. He says, so because I am that, now unto him that is able. What is he able to do? Exceedingly. Come on. Come on. Now, pay attention. Because most of us say exceedingly and abundantly. And if you put an and between exceeding and abundance... You limit the exceeding and you put a cap on the abundance. He says, I'm able to do what? Exceedingly? Come on. Come on. Above all that you can what? Ask or? God said, if you can ask for it, I can do it. If you can think about it, I can do it. But I want you to know, I'm not just able to do what you ask or think. I'm able to do what? Exceedingly. Come on. Come on. I need you to let uh, I, I need you to act like you got power now. Come on. You can do better than that. I'm able to do what? Come on. Come on. 
listen, listen. I see some of you are, are sitting in blessed quietness. And somebody told me one time, they said, you don't see nowhere where Jesus did all that jumping and shouting, right? And they almost got me. It was a Presbyterian lady. She said, uh, she said, I don't see where Jesus did all that jumping and shouting and shaking you be doing. So I looked in my Bible, and I didn't see nowhere where Jesus was doing all that jumping and shouting. So I said, maybe I need to stop jumping and shouting and shaking. And then I kept reading. And I said, ma'am, you got me. You're right. But I did find a man in the Bible named Bartimaeus who Jesus touched. And when Jesus got done touching him, the Bible say he left jumping and shouting. Well, guess what? He touched me. Y'all not talking back to me. Hallelujah. And if he touches you, you ought to shout and jump sometime. Come on, shout like you got victory in here. All right. Now, now unto him that it, I, 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 want you, I want you to be very prayerful because I see an attack against the lineage of Perry, P-E-R-R-Y. I want you to remember that. Do you know Perry? Do you know it? What's your last name? Perry. Lift your hands. I, I, I want you to be very, very prayerful, and I'll talk to you more about it in a minute. <laughs> All right. Everybody say, hey. All right. Okay, now listen. Now unto him that is able to do what? Come on. Come on. All right. Now, you, you, you're, you're okay. So he's able, right? So we never have to question his ability. That's right. Because he already told you, I'm able to do what? Come on. Come on. So I never have to wonder if God can do it. Because he already told me that I'm able. I'm not just able, I'm able to do above what you're asking me for. You asking me to save your son, I want to save all your children. You asking me for a house, I want to give you houses that you did not build. I feel the Holy Ghost coming on me now, y'all. I said, I feel, you want to ask me for a business? I want to give you supernatural income. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting excited, y'all. Y'all don't mess with me. I'm a Pentecostal. I'm a holy roller. I run and ain't nobody chasing me. Okay. He's able, right? <laughs> but here's the catch. According to the power that worketh in us. Now that's, that's powerful there. And I'm going to say something that's going to mess with you. Because he's able. But the catch is, it's according to the power that worketh in me. Which means, I have something in me that will either loose him or bind him. Whoa. That I carry, hi, 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 hi. I carry something in me that will either loose God to do the unlimited or bind him from doing anything. God will not operate in an environment where there is unbelief. Hebrews 11:6 declares, but without faith, it is what? Impossible to please the Lord. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is, and that he is what? A rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Well, what is this power? What is this power? What, what, what is this power that I have that can either loose him or bind him? Because if I have something in me that can loose God to do the unlimited, I need to find out what it is. What is it? Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is. I'm getting excited, y'all. I feel the Holy Ghost all the way in my baby toe right now, y'all. Now faith is. Substance. Now, sub means under. Stance means stand. Faith is something you can stand on when you ain't got nothing. When you don't have a dime in your pocket, if you got faith, it'll bring you through. Now faith is the substance of things what? Hopeful. It's the evidence of things not seen. Let me, let me break it down. Water is the substance of the ice that you hope for. Water is the substance of the ice that you hope for. 
You don't see the ice, but you have the water. And as long as you have the water, the water has the power to produce the ice. But it comes through process. Let me help you understand what faith is. Okay. It, it, it's like the Lord telling me this morning, it's going to rain. Okay? The sun is out. The meteorologist said, it's not going to rain. But I go to everybody and I say, it's going to rain. So I walk out the house with a raincoat, rain boots, umbrella, hat, and everybody looking at me crazy. <laughs> and they saying, why in the world do he got an umbrella and it's 90 degrees outside? The weather doesn't call for rain. It doesn't look like it's going to rain. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. So when I operate in faith, it's me walking outside with rain gear on. Though the sun is shining and everybody's calling me crazy, I'm walking around with an umbrella saying, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain. Folk looking at you saying, that man is crazy. Something happened to him. He has a mental problem. But you know what God said. And the reason you're operating is not by what you see, but it's by what you heard. Because faith cometh by... Somebody been reading your Bible. Romans 10, 17. Say, faith cometh by what? Hearing by the what? Word of God. Okay. Catch this. You ready? Yeah. Come on, shake your big head one more time. Say. All right, come on. All right now. Faith cometh by what? Yeah. I can't hear you. Faith cometh by what? Yeah. Hearing by the what? Word of God. The only thing that produces faith is the word. Faith cometh by? Yeah. All right, so that's how I get it. I get faith by hearing the word. So I have to turn off the television, I have to hang up the phone, and I have to become word friendly. Because if I hear that word, that word is going to convince me. What, what do you mean? I don't care what the doctors have told you. Isaiah 53 and 5 say, but he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised. Y'all ain't shouting in here. I told somebody, I want to get so full of the word that if I ever go to the doctor and they cut me open, they're going to find a scripture that says he was wounded for my transgression. Come on. Hallelujah. Faith coming back. Okay, let me help you. Let, let me break it down. Okay. I, was a, uh, 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 I was a teenager and I wanted a car. And I wanted one bad. And I told the Lord, I did not want any kind of car. I told God, I, I, I'm a teenager now, I'm, I'm in high school. I said, Lord, I want a real nice, fancy, luxurious car. Because I'm a king's kid. Amen. Amen. I, could, I could live like I want to live and drive what I want to drive and be what God has called me to be. The key is you got to don't let it have you. You can have it, but don't let it have you. I said, Lord, I, 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 want, I want a real nice car. So I went to a Mercedes-Benz lot. I'm a teenager. And I walk in there. And I say, hey. I say, I want that car. They say, come on. We're going to check your credit. I say, don't waste your time. I don't have none. My exact words to them was, I don't, these are my exact words, I was real zealous. I said, I don't have a credit report, but I have a tithe report from my church that I can bring to you, because he told me if I give my tithe, he'll rebuke the devourer for my sake. So the lady thought I was crazy, you know? And uh, she said, well, I know you mean well, but you won't be getting this car. I said, okay. So I left, and I looked at the car. I, you know, them nice cars look like the grill be smiling at you. The front of it look like it be smiling. So since it was smiling, I talked to it. I said, hey, don't you go nowhere. I'm coming back to get you. 
Then I wrote my first and last name and put it under the seat and walked off. And at the time, I might have had a, 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 a thousand dollars in my account. So I said, if what I have does not meet my need, it's a seed. If I, if I have a need that costs three million dollars, what am I holding on to a thousand dollars for? A thousand dollars won't help me. So I said, it's a seed. So I went to church that night, I sold, and I went the next day right back. And the Holy Ghost said, I want you to go back, and this time I want you to walk around the car seven times. <laughs> so I go to the dealership. And I go up to the car I want, and I go to walking. Now, they really think I'm crazy now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I walk around the car, but I don't walk around the car quiet. I'm quoting the word. Why? I'm finna show you a great revelation. We're about to shout. You ready? Yeah. Romans 10 say, faith cometh by. Yeah. That let me know right there. Faith is a man. Faith got legs and faith got ears. Because faith cometh by hearing. But faith don't come when it hears anything. Faith come when he hears the word. Oh, y'all gonna catch it. So I'm at the car lot. I don't have the money. This is a nice car. I'm rocking around the car and I'm saying stuff like, Lord, you said that you will supply all my need and I don't need to be walking. I need to be driving. Lord, you my shepherd and I shall not want. Lord, you said no good thing will you withhold from them who walk up right before you. I'm just walking around the car quoting the word. This is a true story. I'm a walk quoting that word. Walk quote. Now, I don't know where faith was. Faith might have been at McDonald's. <laughs> faith might have been helping somebody get a car. A house. I don't know where faith was. But when faith heard the word at the dealership, faith came to where I was. And the lady walked out there. I said, where you going? She said, the owner said, he tired of seeing you drive, walk around the car. He told me to come out here and work it out. The car is yours. Y'all not talking back to me. Somebody shout, God is getting ready to blow my mind. If you don't say that better, I'm going to throw this mic at you. Jump on your feet and say, God's getting ready to blow my mind. After those in attendance at this Benny Hinn miracle service in Sydney, Australia, enthusiastically responded to the opportunity Brian Carn presented to them, the prophetic anointing was displayed with power and accuracy. There is... Uh, 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 a very important letter coming to you and I'm looking at a P.O. box it looks like it has a 4, a 7, an 8 and a 9 in it 4, 7, 7, 8, 9 is that right? that's your your P.O. box number there is a very important document coming there for you do you know a Lance that's you. Come here. Lift your hands high. Where are you from? Sydney. Been here all your life? Stretch your hands toward him. Everybody stretch your hands toward him. Uh, C-U-R-Y-E-R, -E something like that? Correct. What's that? Karaya. What is that? It's my surname. Oh, that's your last name? Yes. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> okay, come here. You know, God have to give me those names because we don't have those names in America. You understand? So, <laughs> shut your hands toward him. Woman right here with the black and white scarf. Is it Naomi? Come here. Jim. Run to me. Run, run. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. No, no, let her on. Hallelujah. Lift your hand. The Lord's doing something for you by way of inheritance. I want you to be very uh Chi Chi Nail Chi Chi. What's your last name? Chi C H E. Okay, lift your hand. <laughs> That's God, y'all. Wow. That's right. Wow. Shut your hands to water. Of course you know that that service is right there in Sydney, Australia. 
I was there with Pastor Benny. He allowed me the opportunity to minister to the people. And I want to tell you, the faith was so high. There was such a strong anointing in that room. And I want to give you an opportunity to partake of that same miracle that was in there. Well, let me tell you, Ephesians 3 and 20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you can ask or think. There's no distance in the spirit. The same anointing that was there in Australia is the same anointing ministering to you right now. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above. That was that message. That faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's confidence in God. It's trusting God. Water is the substance of the ice that you hope for. You don't see the ice, but you see the water. As long as you have the substance, you know the ice is coming. Same thing with faith. As long as you have faith, everything you believe in God for is going to manifest. Because my faith is in the word of God. I want to give you an opportunity right now under this anointing. That same power, that same anointing that you saw, that same presence, that, that I mean, it was radical. The, the people began to understand that things were getting ready to happen and change. And I, God elevated their faith to a level of increase and understanding that take the limits off of God. You keep thinking that God needs 10 years to make you a multimillionaire. He needs 10 years to change your life or 10 years to cause your business to go to the next level. Do you know in a matter of five minutes, matter of fact, you can sow this seed right now and in three minutes, your life could change. That's what can happen. It doesn't take long with God. He doesn't need time. God controls time. Time doesn't control God. You don't operate in a realm of, 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 of facts. You live in a place of truth. God is truth. He's not a God of facts. He's a God of truth. I am the way, the truth, and the light. I want to tell you, as I said in that message, faith is a man. Faith got legs, and faith cometh by hearing. And it comes when he hears that word. I dare you right now in your home to begin to quote the word of God. And faith is getting ready to show up to your house. He's going to show up to the jailhouse. Maybe there's someone watching me in prison. You're there wrongfully. You've been wrongfully accused and you're ready to go home. I decree a miracle is coming to the jail. I feel that anointing. Or maybe there's someone, you're watching me, you're in the hospital. Rise up and walk. I want to pray for you right now that that same anointing that was in that room, that same anointing will come to you. And I'm telling you, if you honor God, something powerful is about to happen in your life. Are you ready? Father, I give you praise for that anointing that's permeating the air. I give you praise that somebody is calling upon you. They're listening to you and they shall understand after today that there are no limits on you. They're taking the limits off. I thank you for that anointing to take the limits off in the name of Jesus. Is being released right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You ought to start praising God and rejoicing and giving God the glory because right now that anointing for increase is about to hit your life. That's what God said to me. He told me to minister to you and he told me to minister to the people in Australia that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. But it's according to the power that worketh in us. What power? The power to obey. Let's be obedient. Isaiah 119. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the lamb. Let's do it. Let's obey the Holy Ghost. Let's give. Let the Lord speak to you. He's speaking to you right now. Obey the Holy Ghost and so. You know, I, 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 I would like to tell you what I'm hearing. I, I just want to challenge you. I want to challenge everyone that can. To honor God, get a $100 seed. Trust him with a seed of $100. Dial the number on the screen. Dial whoever you need to dial. Call the number on the screen. I'm asking you to go on the Internet, put the money in the mail. A $100 bill. As a matter of fact, 
Do it now. Call and say, I'm giving $100 and watch God. That's all I can tell you. Take the limits off. He's getting ready to blow your mind. I'll see you later. God bless you. Bye-bye. I've been asking as my partner to send in pictures of loved ones and friends. Our people are praying 24 hours a day in this prayer room for you. And I don't want you missing the opportunity to be prayed for. Let's believe for when we come together in prayer and in agreement, things always happen. Get ready. Your miracle is surely on the way. Saving Our Children's Health is Dr. Eric Braverman's brand new book, which features detailed guidelines to giving your sons, daughters, and grandchildren better brains, stronger bodies, and greater futures. In this groundbreaking volume, Dr. Braverman, considered to be one of America's most innovative physicians, explains in simple terms how to manage your child's health with easy lifestyle changes, including improved diet, exercise, sleep patterns, and medication when necessary. The book, Saving Children's Health, is simply going to be the greatest pediatric children's manual and protecting the next generation of United States citizens in this book. It's a whole new pediatric. Instead of 18 vaccines that we're all worried about, I'm talking about arriving at 18 with the greatest spiritual and physical health that we've ever seen in medicine. You can have your own copy of Saving Our Children's Health. Request a second copy to give to a family member or friend. It's never too early to begin developing or too late to restore your children's physical, mental, and emotional well-being and point them to a happy, healthy, and successful future. Call now. Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today, who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. The Bible declares the Spirit of the Lord came upon the apostles and the saints of old, and they prophesied. Prophecy today is needed. With me is a young man named Brian Carnes. I've just met him. Quite amazing. Very accurate. I've been trying to find out more about him, and he was just telling me that he came to one of my meetings in Lakeland years ago. How old were you then? Uh, I don't know, 2001, maybe 12, 13, 14, somewhere around there. You're 20... 27. 27. Yeah. <laughs> I saw this young man prophesy over people a few days ago, no way you would have known anything about them. The man who wrote Holy Ground, you prophesied over him. One of my friends, close friends, was a pastor from Alabama. You were so right on. He was crying. He actually just called and said he wants the tape. Wow. A friend of mine that you spoke to on the phone, never met him. You read his mail. How did this begin? Before you minister, I want to know about you. And well, people want to know about you. Well, um, uh, I was raised in a home. I have a very safe mother. Super safe. Right? <laughs> I, I mean, love that. I mean, church was not an option. If you wasn't saved, you had to act like you were saved till you got saved. So church was never <laughs> an option. You had to go to church. So I was in church Sunday morning, Sunday night. Hmm. My, I mean, every day of the week was we were in church. Uh, the Lord saved my mother in 1983 is when she got saved. And I was raised in a good church, good foundation in Florida. church in Jacksonville, Florida. Great church. You still live there. That's my home. And uh, raised there all my life and uh, brought me up in the Lord. But uh, I, I began to seek God because I read your book. Good morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. How old were you when you read it? Uh, I had to be somewhere around middle school, high school, maybe wow. ninth grade. And uh, I was really reaching out to God. And a woman by the name of Sister Donna told me to read Robert Learden's book, God's Generals. I read that book. I studied on Catherine Kuhlman, Mariah Woodworth, Anna, Amy Smith, and John G. Lake, Oral Roberts, Evans Roberts. I read all of their criteria. And uh, I just began to worship God at that mm. time wow. for hours. That was when uh, 
Brother McCommon uh, had that. Terry, yeah. All had a powerful worship CD. This is the time when true worshipers would work. And I would just worship God. I'd go shut up in my room for hours and hours. And uh, That's I, how the Lord met you, wow. And I came from a church with good foundation, great teaching, but that that was not the norm, you know, for somebody to go lock up in their room for hours. So I would do that. My mom thought at this time he's losing it because she wasn't used to that. You know, she loved God, but she wasn't used to seeing me go in the room. And I just, I would And you were back. still quite young. I mean, still a you're kid. young now. You're yes, still sir. 27. I was a teenager. I was a teenager. So I kept going back and I would meet God at a certain time. And uh, I would just worship God for hours and hours and hours. And I had a visitation when I was young. Well, the Spirit Lord told me that his hand was upon me and be like it under Jeremiah and uh, how it would build up, tear down, dissolve, all that, all those things. It spoke of my life. And uh, as a kid, I just began to prophesy things by accident that came to pass. My gift was not developed then. I uh, ministered a word to a woman next to me in church. And uh, I said, you're going to get a blessing tomorrow by $800. And the I'm just a kid in church, just zealous. And the next day, she got $800. And I was so happy it came to pass, you know. But I didn't know it was going to come to pass or not. But I, I believed it and it happened. And uh, even I'm thinking now, going back to elementary school, I sung in the choir and I played instruments. And my mother uh, got very frustrated about something. I told my mom, I said, there's a ridiculous blessing going to come for you. <laughs> and, uh, and I said it to her. <laughs> And the a next day, blessing. a I ridiculous like blessing. And yeah. the next day, um, we was. Uh, she used to do the smoke machine for the choir, you know, like for like uh, effects. Oh, I smoke. see. Yeah, yeah. And she did it. And the band teacher, Mr. Wilson, he said, "Are you going on a trip?" She said, "No." He said, "Well, who's going to do the smoke machine?" She said, "I don't know. I can't afford to go on a trip." He said, "We're going to pay for your trip." She said, oh, that's my ridiculous blessing. <laughs> and um, I read Brother Bill Hammond's book, Prophets and Personal Prophecy. Yeah. And I just began to really, really, really reach out to God in a very strong way and worship God. And God began to use me powerfully at my school, began to minister to people, and it would come to pass. And, and uh, that, that's my life story. Uh, that's what God did for me. I'm going to have you minister tonight, and I'm going to show a part of it on the program so be watching yes uh keep keep talking is is god saying anything to you about somebody watching <laughs> but, but. he's very detailed precious people i mean listen i've known prophets for the last 40 years of my life we've had them come to occ oh goodness so many of them i think it's neat. you're you're one of the most accurate ones by the way i accept i think it's very needful you know second Chronicles well we need the gift 20 and 20 declares believe his prophets so shall you prosper. And I tell people, if he has prophets, the enemy has prophets. You know too. what we all noticed about you um, when you came to Atlanta a few days ago? Is you were just worshiping God, tears flowing down your cheeks. Yes, you were just lost in the spirit. You were not watching and checking things out. You were just gone, loving Jesus. And I looked at you at one point and I thought, that's a real young man. He really loves the Lord. Yes, sir. You sure love Jesus. That's why. That's why you're here. Yes, sir. I do. You gotta say something to the camera. <laughs> you wanna well, talk to somebody? I, I, I believe that you that are listening. I don't believe it's by accident or coincidence. You know, you've been from Jaffa, Israel. You know, in Hebrew, there is no Hebrew word for our English word coincidence. And if there's no word for it, it must not exist. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And I don't believe it's by accident that you're watching right now. There's someone watching me right now. Your life is at a wit's end and you're seeking God for direction. And I believe that whenever God is going to do anything in your life, according to Psalm 105, 19, Joseph was put in a pit until the time that his word came. Not a red handkerchief, not a green prosperity handkerchief. Not not miracle spring water. Thank you for saying that. Brother. One word from the Lord. Thank you. One word caused Joseph to come out of a pit. You're one word away from a supernatural change in your life. All it takes is one word for your life to go from one place to another. I had a man of God speak word over my life as a kid. Spoke over my life. Pastor Benny spoke over my life in Lakeland, Florida. How that God would use. What me. did I say to you? Well, this is okay. Now this this years ago, you call me out. And prophesied to me, told me the light of God was on me. 
and told me that I was a prophet and God was going to use me across the country. Wow. And it happened. It came to pass. This is the first time I hear it right now. It came to pass. Maybe that's that's why I, I liked what I saw when he came to Atlanta. <laughs> yes, Keep sir. talking. This is precious, what, what you're saying. And one word, and I, I went to a man in Jacksonville, went to a church, and a man of God spoke over my life. He called me out, a man by the name of Brother McCoy, powerful prophet. He said to me, God's going to make you bigger than big, larger than large. There'll be places you don't go, that I don't go, that you'll go. But the key to your anointing is humility. That word changed my life. In 2006, went to a meeting in Newport News, Virginia for three days. Three days turned into 10 weeks, a move of God for 10 weeks in Newport News. And from 2006 to 2014, look at me now. I'm sitting in a camel with Pastor Benny Hinn. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. One word can change your life. Stop trying to figure out how. Stop trying to figure out what. Just trust him. If you have enough faith to say it, God has enough power to do it. There's someone listening to him. I want you to know that you watching right now, this one word can cause your life to change forever. And I think people need to know that, that God has set up prophets in the church to change the course of your life. That when a prophet comes, when you meet a prophet, when you meet a man of God and they speak a word, the course of your life changes. The next few moments, I'm going to show you a clip of him ministering. We're going to come back in just a little bit, and I want him to pray that the prophetic will be released on, on your life. Because I believe the Lord wants to speak to you and also use you. So let's go right now and, and, and see the part of God. We're going to come back and pray. While I was standing here, the Lord told me that there was a woman down here who had a son named Sean. And I looked at you, Pastor, and I said, the Lord told me that woman down there has a son named Sean. Lift your hands. The difference between a psychic and a prophet is a psychic can see it, but a psychic can't change it. I see in the realm of the spirit an attack against your son's life there is a he, his life for the last seven years has been in a turmoil topsy-turvy and there's a promise on his life since he was a child pastor Benny prayed up when he was a child there's a promise on his life since he was a child but the enemy has come to subvert and to hinder his plan but the Spirit of God told me to speak as a prophet, not just to see it, but to change it tonight. Whatever has been spoken against your seed and against your children, this day is your hour of visitation. And the Lord is also healing you in the lower part of your back, going all the way down your leg. This is your hour of restoration, saith the Lord of hosts. Hey, there's been an attack. You've been going through some things physically in your body that you've not shared. Waking up between one and four in the morning. And you've been tossing and turning. And there's even a certain pillow that you have in your bed because of a problem in your neck. There's a certain way you have to sleep in order to rest. But the Spirit of God said... This is your hour of restoration. Everything that was taken shall be restored. And the Spirit of God says, get ready, for there is something in the state of Florida that is getting ready to unlock for you. For the Spirit of God said, this is your hour of visitation. I'm breaking asunder the bars of iron. North Carolina shall call you, and I'm getting ready to undergird you. The Spirit of God said, I've not forgotten you. Be of good cheer. You told God, I'm going to come to this meeting because I need to hear from you. You and your wife said, we're going to come to this meeting because we need to hear from God. The Spirit of God said, I've heard you. I've seen your supplication. And that fast and that seed you went on, you sowed at the beginning of the year. You shall see a return to that harvest, saith the Lord. Ah, saith the Lord. Somebody better shout and give God praise. Hey! The Lord told me to tell you that all your life you have pushed. All your life, you've been a pusher. You don't mind being in the backdrop. That's your whole life. 
you've been a pusher. But the Spirit of God said, now I'm getting ready to push you. There is a mantle that was upon your mother. And the Spirit of God said, you're walking in that mantle. I want to minister to you because right now I see God touching your heart. You have some kind of bad report that the doctors told you about your heart. And this thing has bothered you. It has stressed you. You've been to the doctor. You've had all kind of tests. This, uh, I, I, I'm looking at these heart palpitations and these irregular heartbeats and these things, this shortness of breath you experience and all these things. Even, even at night, your sleeping has been inconsistent because of this pain that bothers you in your heart. But the Spirit of God says, today, under this anointing, you are healed and the report is in your favor. Hallelujah. I just had to have a heart procedure three weeks ago, and I've been so worried. But my dad called me a week ago and said, my dad's a pastor. And he said, son, your mom and I have been talking, and when I was in Israel, I bought a mantle. And I want to have a service and pass this mantle to you. So the mantle, the heart, everything you said is so right on. It's freaking me out. The Spirit of God says that this is an hour of investment. This is an hour you shall begin to see return on the investments that you've made. For there is a great favor upon your life for finance. And there's an unusual favor upon your life, even as it pertains to the market in the days to come. But the Spirit of God says prepare yourself. For this day, every investment that you've made, even the things you made over the course of the last seven years that you've not yet seen a return on, this will be the season where God said you shall see the return. I'm looking at some property before you right now as I speak that you're praying to God about whether you should step forward in this, whether you should sell it, whether you should keep it, what should you do? I hear the name David, and God is giving you favor with an individual by the name of David. And I see you in negotiation. Prepare yourself. For the Spirit of God said, what the enemy has meant for bad, this day it is turning for your good. And the Lord said, as you just begin to write, you are a writer. As you begin to write and jot down the things that he give you, I see journals and journals and journals of information that are literally locked up. I've never been to your home, but I'm at the last room on the left hand side. Look like that's a time that looked like your bedroom, but it's the last room on the left hand side. And the Spirit of God says, I see journals and journals that are stacked away in top of a closet. But the Spirit of God was saying to you, this is the season for you to take those journals out and you begin to read over those journals and I shall give you information and I shall give you insight for there is yet a secret that I'm bringing before you and this is an hour where I am renewing your strength as that of an eagle saith the Lord. The Lord will have me to say the affliction that came upon you once, he don't want you to be worried thinking it's going to come against you the second time it will not come back saith God but this is your hour of restoration and this is the season where you will see me manifest every promise that I've spoken over your life come on give God a great big hand at the, at the end was he right with everything you said even the stacked stuff on your closet the bedroom the whole thing now, you did not know he's in real estate, you see? Wow. Well, we all know that. Wow. I didn't tell him nothing. I didn't tell him a thing. Hold, 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 hold one minute. Lift your hands, everybody. Everybody, hold your hands high. I hear the name Queenie. 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 I'm coming right back. The Lord just interrupted your prophecy, okay? Come here. Stop right there. Where you from? You're Chinese. Uh, where were you born? Lift your hand. Ah, uh, Cheong, Cheong, Cheong. What's that? That's your last name. Okay, lift your hand. I got the right person. I just had to check. Lift your hand. You know, you can't guess them names. God got to give you them names. <laughs> you know, you could guess Mary, Diane. You can't guess Queenie. 
Lift your hands. There's a major business venture that is getting ready to open unto you. I see you receiving a phone call. Mm. I'm prophesying today, y'all. I feel it. I see you receiving a major phone call. The last four digits are 9865. Huh? That's my phone call. That's your? My, my cell phone number. That's your cell phone number. Lift your hands. The Spirit of God is saying to you that this phone call is going to come and change your life. Wherever you are presently concerning a business deal and negotiation that is on the table, the Spirit of the Lord said that this day an opposing force from your father's bloodline that has hindered you from walking into your prosperity. This stronghold is being completely broken tonight. The Spirit of God said, prepare yourself for this day. I've heard your supplication and whatever the enemy has meant for your bad, the property is yours. You will not have to fight. There will be no going back and forth between you and lawsuits and people. This day, the business venture is placed into your hands, and I'm giving you supernatural favor, saith the Lord of hope. Everybody say, hey. In no way he would have known all this information unless the Lord showed him that. That was really quite powerful. I want you to release the prophetic on the people today and then talk to them. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I give you praise for supernatural grace. Cause their eyes to come open. You, Father, there are those listening to me who have gifts of prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom that are dormant in their bellies. But Father, in Jesus' name, I stir those gifts up and declare that they will not be ignorant to Satan's devices. But you're giving them ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit is saying to the church. I stir up that prophetic anointing Amen, in you Lord. and command you to come forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All yours. I, I, I believe right now that this one word in your life is getting ready to cause your life to change. What is that one word? Are you ready? Here's the word. Whatever you've been in before you watch this program, because you came in contact with a prophet, according to Hosea chapter 12, verse 13, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. When God got ready to lead his people, he raised up Moses. When God got ready to feed his people, he raised up Joseph. When God got ready to restore Israel, he raised up Nehemiah. When God got ready to weep, he raised up Jeremiah. When God got ready to prophesy of his coming, he raised up Isaiah. When God got ready to bring you up, he raised up Brian Carn. I've been sent by the Holy Ghost to pull you out of whatever you've been in. And one word from a prophet can cause your life to change. I want to speak that word to you now and declare that whatever you're in right now, whatever you're facing, whatever's coming against you, whatever's tormenting you, whatever's blocking you, there's a lawyer watching me right now. You have a practice that has been on hold. I come to speak a word and declare into your life that whatever's been on hold today, that yoke is destroyed. There's another woman watching me. You have a beauty salon and seem like nothing will break, nothing will change, nothing will shift. There's an unusual anointing right now for business, for entrepreneurs, for you that are listening. You're not watching this by accident. You're watching this because you're on the mind of God. And Jeremiah 29, 11 declares that I know my thoughts that I think towards you. Their thoughts of peace and not of evil. It's to give you an expected end. That's why you're watching. You're watching because God is concerned about your personal situation. From Genesis to Revelation, when God got ready to bring his people out, he raised up a prophet. But here's the key. The key to the blessing is following instructions. One instruction can change your life. One instruction can cause your life to never, ever, ever be the same again. Remember that widow woman? She obeyed the prophet and her river never ran dry. That other woman obeyed the prophet, went and borrowed vessels. Do you know that was crazy? She was already in debt and he told her to get in more debt, go borrow vessels. 
Any accountant would have told you, if you're in debt, you don't keep borrowing. But God gets the glory when your credit card is maxed out, your account is in the negative, and there's no other way he's going to come out. That's when God steps on the scene. So your situation is there now. Nobody but God can bring you out. That's what he's been waiting on. He doesn't share his glory. He wants your situation to get to a place where only he can bring you out. You know, when you look at the woman, at the way, that, that woman who cried, catch this. She caught her tears with tear bottles. I studied that. The woman who the Bible says she washed his feet with her hand, washed his feet with her tears and dried it with her hair. You know, I thought that she just went in there and started crying. But I looked at something that said that at that time they carried tear bottles. And what they would do is they would catch their tears and put it in a bottle. If they had tears of heartbreak, tears of grief, tears of pain, tears of disappointment, they would catch those tears. Watch this. Mary's tear bottle filled up and then she met Jesus. Right now, your tear bottle is filled up. And now you're going to have an encounter with Jesus. You're going to lay your tears at the feet of Jesus. You're laying your problems at Jesus' feet. One word from God is getting ready to cause your life to change. Pastor, I, I feel an instruction that God is telling me to give the people. Do you mind if I Please, tell please go ahead. I believe right now, you know, I studied something that said that any synagogue is completely debt free. Every synagogue is completely debt free. That they don't even take up the offerings in the service. That they raise the monies, the business owners raise the monies to build the synagogues and they are completely debt free. There is somebody watching me right now. I believe there's an anointing that is being released over this airway for supernatural increase, divine increase. I'm not talking about what your job can do. Your job can't pay you the money God wants to give you. Your job was never designed to make you rich. It's designed to make your boss rich. God want to give you some money. Supernatural increase, divine increase. I'm talking about money that don't make sense. That's an anointing I feel. He wants to pull you out of that struggle. He wants to pull you out of that dry place. He wants to pull you into a land not just of not enough. He wants to bring you out of the land of not enough into the land of more than enough because just enough just ain't good enough. It's time for you to possess your promise. This is what the Spirit of God is speaking to me right now. And I believe if you honor these instructions, your life is getting ready to change. Pastor, the number 41, the number 41, the number 41 is the number of over. It's over. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. On the 41st day, it was over. Noah was on the ark for 40 days and 40 dead nights. The 41st day, it was over. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. But I believe right now there's somebody watching me. Whatever you're in, God sent the prophet to declare it's over. This is what I want you to do. Do not hesitate. Don't think about it. Don't wonder. Because any time you think, you're going to miss it. John 2 and 5. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. I told a woman in Washington, D.C., Bishop Alfred and Susie Orange Church, I told her, I said, who is Bridget? She said, I'm Bridget. I said, give me $100. She said, why? I said, God's going to give you 100000 She said, when? I said, tomorrow. She walked in that church with $113,000 the very next day. I want to speak over your life right now that whatever you're in is getting ready to break. This is what I want you to do. There's a number on your screen. Don't hesitate. Right now, while the anointing is flowing, I want you to get a $41 seat in your hand. 141 there are 20 people you're to give 1,041. Don't hesitate. Somebody said, is it me he's talking to? Yep. Let him call my name. Nope. Only a wicked and perverse generation seeketh after a sign. Trust him. You only have one moment to trust him. Don't miss your hour of visitation. So that $41 seed, because I prophesy and declare that whatever you are dealing with now, it's over by the word of a prophet.
I really feel the anointing with you. Hallelujah. Thank God for his mercy. We'll call Thank the number Jesus. on the screen and obey the Lord. Just Glory. do it now and watch what God will do. I really feel the Spirit of God here. Thank you, Release Jesus. that anointing on the people. For Father, the in the name of Jesus, I thank you yes, for Lord. supernatural increase. Yes, Lord. I thank you that the blessing of God is running them down and overtaking them. Amen, Lord. God, that word overtake, I like to say the blessing is going to hijack them. Father, hijack them with blessings right now. Amen. Cause there to be a supernatural takeover and bless them and cause reports to come in. 24 hour turnarounds. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Do it now and Hallelujah. rejoice in what the Lord will Hallelujah. do. I'll see you again. Keep calling. Bye bye. Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. During Pastor Benny Hinn's recent miracle services in Downey, California, he invited Brian Karn to minister in all three meetings, and the prophetic anointing was evident and accurate in amazing ways. One, zero, one, four, three. Is that your address? What is, what is he doing, Jonathan? Ah, uh, that's his old address. Hey. The Spirit of the Lord says that there is a spirit from your old house that have followed you to your new house. And that's why you cannot seem to have peace where you are. But the Spirit of the Lord brought you here this night that he might grant unto you supernatural peace. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. But I see in the realm of the Spirit, I saw a doctor. A doctor walked up to me. When he walked up to me, he put a paper in my hand. On top of the paper, I saw the word fibromyalgia. This is what the Lord is saying to me, that you received a report from the doctor where they told you that you had fibromyalgia. But the Spirit of the Lord said, this night, you're completely healed by the power of God. Was he right? Right on, she says. Somebody gave you a letter that said fibromyalgia. Huh? The diagnosis uh, was 14 years ago, and I've been dealing with it off and on. And tonight, um, when you actually, when you're reading the word, I just felt this heat cover my whole body. See, when we talk about Jesus, he always shows up. <laughs> Glory. Praise God. I want you to remember that name, like a Kyler. For I saw <laughs> in the realm of the spirit an angel approach, but I also saw a spirit. And this spirit had in his hand a spirit of depression. On the board, I saw the name Chris. This is what the Lord said to me. He said, tell her that the attack that is against Chris is an attack to is an attack to subvert and to hinder your assignment. It is just a frustration, saith the Lord, to keep you depressed and to keep you down. But the Lord says, I'm sending an angel even to your house and I'm visiting Chris and Kyler, saith the Lord. Somebody open your mouth and release a praise. Do you know who Chris is and Kyler is? Chris is her son. Wow. And Kyler is her son. Wow. You just gave her the, her children's names. Wow. That's why she shook up like this. And her husband is a little shaken up. Kyler is in depression. You don't know that, but I do. Wow. And that's her, her young boy. Wow. And Chris is her older son. Wow. Pastor Benny asked Brian to speak to the overflow audience during one of the services in Downing. And the prophetic word of the Lord which was delivered can radically impact your life as it did for those in attendance. One word from the Lord can change your life. 
I mean, that, that, that's like all it takes. It, it doesn't take a whole bunch of fanfare. Isaiah 119 declares, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. John 2 and 5, Jesus was talking, and he said, listen, Mary was talking about her son Jesus. She said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. If you learn how to follow instructions, you can get everything you need from God. This thing's getting ready to happen in our country. However, in the midst of the darkness that is coming upon the world, God is raising up a people who are going to be the light of the world. But you cannot have light unless there's darkness. So darkness is going to cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon the people of God. People are not going to understand how we're living, how we're surviving, because while everybody else is losing their mind, going crazy, Isaiah 26 say, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So, so many people are going to be falling by the wayside. That, that, I, I want to tell you this. I don't care who your disability is, who your social security is. You cannot have confidence in the government. You must know who your source is. And you got to know that I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help. Look at somebody and say, God is my source. Tell that to somebody else. Say, God is my source. Tell that one more person. God is my source. I was talking to one lady the other day, and I was talking to her about believing God and about giving. She said, Prophet, I, I, I just can't do that. I said, why? She said, I'm on a fixed income. I asked her, who fixed it? <laughs> now, now, you shall have whatever you say. Do you believe that? Yeah. All right. Now, you see my mama here? My mama used to work at this place called Etna Insurance, right? And I used to seek the Lord and pray, 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 like go in my room for a long time, right? Well, one day, I told my mama, it was late at night, and I, she had rollers in her head and everything. And it was really late at night, and I walked up to her, I said, Mama, she said, what? I said, the Lord told me to tell you this. I, and uh, and, uh, and uh, I said, you got to believe this, now you got to believe this. She said, okay. I said, the Lord told me to tell you, your job is going to pay you to leave. So she shouted, but I know she didn't believe me, but she just shouted because I was her son and she didn't want to make me feel bad. You understand? I say, Mama, your job going to pay you leave. So she shouted, praise the Lord, I receive it. Well, at the time, she was going through hell and high waters at her job. So she most definitely didn't believe that her job was going to pay her to leave. And one day my mother came in about 12, 1 o'clock, screaming, hollering, shouting. I said, what you shouting for? She said, I went to work today and they called me in the office. I said, they did? She said, yeah. I said, well, what happened? She said, they called me in there and they say, we paying you. You're getting on our nerve. We're just going to pay you to leave the job. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Everybody say, hey. I just left Pastor Rod Parsley's church. I was only supposed to be there for one night, right? The power of God fell. We was there for two weeks. That's never happened in the church, right? I told Pastor Parsley, I said, Pastor Parsley, you're not going to believe me, but if you do this, God going to bless you. He said, what? I said, give $10,000 right now. He started jerking and bucking and shouting, doing a... You, I say, Pastor, that ain't giving now. You just shout right now. Lord say, give it. Praise God. I say, you give it, and tomorrow, God going to blow your mind. He gave that seed of $10,000, and the next day he got the church. If I'm lying, God going to kill me, y'all. The next day, he got the church, and a woman put a chick in his hand for $200,000. Everybody say, hey. I was at his service and another woman came and I told her, I said, give me $77. She said, for what? I said, because I told you to. I said, God going to give you a blessing and it's going to come tomorrow. It's going to be supernatural. Matter of fact, I want to prophesy to everybody here that supernatural increase is about to hit your life. If y'all don't shout that, then I'm going to throw this mic at you. Somebody shout, supernatural increase is coming to my house. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm going to get a check in the mail. Tomorrow. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Say tomorrow. Say tomorrow. 
I don't know who that's for, but I feel that for somebody. Say tomorrow. Now, I dare you to yell out your address so they know where to bring the money to. Come on, call out all your addresses. There one of them. Now, hold on. So I told this woman, I told this woman, I say, ma'am, I said, give me $77. She said, okay, I'm going to try it out. And I say, God going to blow your mind tomorrow. I don't get them words often, but listen here. Let me tell you something about Prophet Carl. I ain't the greatest preacher. I ain't the greatest singer, but let me tell you. If I tell you there's a TV in your backyard and you go home and the TV is not there, call the police. Somebody stole your TV. Okay? Say that to the man. So, I want... <laughs> okay. So, I want... Listen, y'all. So, so, the Holy Ghost said to me, Tell that woman to give $77. So she gave $77, right? And I said, tomorrow, God going to blow your mind. Tomorrow. I said, it's going to be supernatural. I can't explain it, but it's going to happen tomorrow. So she came to church, you know, driving to come to church the next night. And she stopped at the convenience store so she would have some money to bring in church. Now listen. If it's a lie, she told it. I'm just telling what she said, all right? Now, we got to church that night, and she went to go take out $100. When she went to take out $100, she got back her bank statement. It said she had $110,000. All she had was $200. So guess what I told her? Get to the bank at 8.59 tomorrow morning and take all that money at the bank and do not tell them they made a mistake because that was God. Say amen. Now, I'm, I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this real strong. I got an assignment to the body because one place where we have messed up, we bless, we healed, we have power, we have deliverance, but the one place where the church is crippled is finances. It can hold you back. It can stop you. You can tell me something, you love God and everything, but let me tell you something. If you don't have money, it hinders what you want to do in the kingdom. Now, I need you to look at that person next to you and say, neighbor. neighbor. See, now, see that person next to you won't smile. Don't fool with them. Talk to somebody else, okay? No, don't, don't, even, don't even put up with them. You ain't got time for that tonight. Come on. Look at somebody. Say, neighbor. neighbor. God, God is going to use me to pay your house off. Now, see that? You don't believe that, do you? You don't believe that, do you? All it takes is what? One word. Say it again. One word. Yeah. One word from God can absolutely change your life. You think it takes a whole bunch of shucking and jiving and falling out? That's not what it takes. All it takes is for God to speak one word into your life. And that one word can usher you from one season into a new season. The Lord said to me that 2015 was going to be a great year for the people of God. He said to me that this year would be the, like the igniter or the precedence that would, that would set the pace for the next seven years of your life. That if you were tapped into his rest this year, it's going to set you up. See, this year is a year of rest. You ain't supposed to be stressing. You ain't supposed to be mad. You ain't supposed to be letting folk get all under your skin. You tell folk, get out your face. I ain't got time for foolishness. Because this is a year. Somebody shout, rest! Yeah. And, and, and the enemy is going to do everything he can to upset your rest. Are you listening to me? But if you attempt into his rest, his Sabbath, his, his release, that everything that has been held up, God's getting ready to release that stuff in your life this year. I just need 30 of you that believe that to jump up and shout, come on, come on, come on.
Now, are y'all ready? Because the release is going to take place in your life. But you got to talk with power. You know, some of you, you're just so quiet. I don't understand it. Now say it with power. Say more than enough. More than enough. All right, you sound good. You sound like you're in the backwoods of Georgia. <laughs> say more than enough. More than enough. Say too much. Too much. Overflow. Overflow. It's coming to my house. Yeah. When? Yeah. When? Yeah. When? Yeah. when? Yeah. Let's try it again. Say more than enough. More than enough. Too much. Too much. Overflow. Overflow. Coming to my house. Yeah. When? Yeah. Say more than enough. More than enough. Too much. Overflow coming to my house, my bank account, my ministry, my children. Win, win, win. Shout like you already got it. All right, now listen. There is. A, 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 a window in the spirit. See, there's a window, and when that window comes, you have to move in it. Now, you can't take your time. When the spirit of the Lord say do something, you got to do it. Because there's a breakthrough in your obedience. Proverbs 3 and 5 say something real powerful. It say, trust in the Lord with what? You should read your Bible sometimes. Trust in the Lord with what? All your heart, lean not to your... Now see, that's what, that's, that's what messes with most of you. You're trying to figure it out. And the thing you're trying to figure out, he's already worked it out. You, you, you sit there and you're trying to come up with a plan of how God going to do this and where it's going to come from. Not understanding, God got a million ways to bless you. God will make people bless you who don't even like you. God will make folk bless you and they don't even know why they're blessing you. But the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and he can turn it whatsoever way he will. I'm telling you, this is the year that your student loan is going to be paid off. This is the year that every debt you got is going to be paid off. If you believe it, shout like you know something good. Now listen, listen, listen. There is a window. That opens in the spirit. And when that window opens, you got to move in it. You know, like, you can't hesitate. You can't sit up right now and understand it. You just got to do it. Because the key to your miracle is your ability to follow instructions. The Holy Ghost will test you. On small stuff. I had a car that I really, really liked. And the Holy Ghost said, give away that car. So I started saying, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you. That's not God. And you know, when you really don't want to do something, you say, Lord, if it's you, let a cow walk in my front yard. When I look at it, let it say, move. And I know it's you. How many folk know when you're supposed to do something, he don't let you rest till you obey him? I called the preacher. I said, hey, preacher, the Lord just told me to give you this car. He started crying. I said, well, you crying? I'm crying too. <laughs> but I let it go. Because I know... He was trying to get something to me. All I can tell you is this tonight. There's a grace upon my life. That if I tell you something, you can put your life on it. One word from God can change your life. Somebody shout one word. One word. Say it again, shout one word. One word. There's somebody on my right. 
your name is like, a, I don't know if it's Theo or like a Fionte, Theo, Fionte. That's the name I hear on my right. Lift your hands. Come to me. See, you can't guess that name. God got to give it to you. You know, you can guess Mary, Joanne, Diane, Fionte. That's God. Praise God. Come on. Come, run. Run for us. Run. Lift your hands. Stretch your hands to water. For the hand of the Lord is on you. And you're chosen from the womb of your mother. And I saw, as it were, in the realm of the spirit, a family. This family is involved in the music industry. I'm looking at a young man. Whoever this young man is, I see him sitting in a studio. The spirit of God is saying to me, tell your brother Baze Bele Diva that God is beginning to breathe on that that he is attempting to produce. For I see something standing in his way, stopping him, but the Lord is opening a door. I also see in the realm of the spirit, shut your hands of water, shut your hands of water. Can I tell y'all what I see? You know, when I was a kid, right? Hey, 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 God the spirit, just one moment. When I was a kid and I had a party, how you doing? And I had a party, I would have like this little, uh, you know them little cone things that be on your head for your birthday? I see a cone on top of your head. Why, why am I seeing that? Today's my birthday. Today your birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, somebody shout in here like you know. If y'all don't shout, I'm going to throw this mic. Everybody say, hey. Lift your hand. Lift your hands high. Every eye closed, every hand up lifted. If I see eyeballs, I'm coming at it with a fork. <laughs> Lift those hands high. Every eye closed, every hand up lifted. The same Holy Ghost that just told me that boy's name and his birthday. The same Holy Ghost that told me to minister to Pastor Parshley to sow that seed. He's talking now. And I got five minutes to move quickly under this anointing. Because there's a window. The Spirit of God spoke to me. Walking into this sanctuary. I actually said it to me last night. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you at. But I'm going to only tell you what the Lord told me. And I don't care. I, I, I know you've given. But I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost said to me. Every eye closed. Every hand up lifted. And he said to me. That this seed. Is going to set the pace for the next seven years of your life. I thank you that doors are being opened right now. I thank you for uncommon, unlimited favor Amen. being released Amen, on every individual under the sound of my voice. Father, I thank you that increase and doors are opening from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Somebody's trusting you tonight. They're stepping out in faith, believing the word of the Lord. Father, we decree miracles in Jesus' name. Lift those hands and pray in the spirit over your seed right now. Name your seed. Come on. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray it about Shai. Pray Amen. in the spirit. Father, we agree in the name of Jesus that seed will come back mighty harvest for your glory and honor. And God's people said, Amen. You must understand how excited I am. And I don't have much time because that anointing is so real, it's so tangible. You can feel the presence of God. I mean, there in Downey, California, there was a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. And people came. And there were testimonies and miracles. And the miraculous took place. And I'm telling you, I want to give you an opportunity to tap into that anointing. Now, you got to hear me. You cannot just look at something on television and say, wow, look at what's happened there. No, that same anointing is present and able to operate in your life. Just one word from God. That's not a joke. 
That's not a gimmick. That's not a game. We're not here just trying to make money. Listen, the gospel must be funded for the furtherance of the kingdom. And in order for it to happen, it's going to take your finances and your seed and you giving unto the Lord. And I'm telling you, what better place to sow your seed into a ministry where souls are being saved, people are being healed, and people are being set free. Just one word from God can change your life. That's why I travel all over the country. That's why I go from here to there to everywhere. And people are calling me, not because I'm handsome, not because I look good, which I believe I do, praise God. But I don't believe that's why. I believe that people are calling from near and far because they know that one word from God can absolutely change your life. Just one word. We don't need any gimmicks. We don't need any games. You don't need any miracle spring water. You don't need a, 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 a bar of soap. You don't need bread. Just one word. Psalm 105, 19 declared until his word came, talking about Joseph, who was in a prison. He was bound. He was oppressed. He was getting ready to, to be offered up, even maybe to die. But one word from God changed his situation. Psalm 119, 105 declare that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and it's a light unto my path. Psalm 119, 130 declares that the entrance of thy word giveth light. I don't care whatever dark situation is going on in your life. The entrance of the word from God brings light to it. There's somebody I'm talking to right now. Your son is in prison and you don't know how you're going to come out of this. But I want to let you know that one word from God can cause things to change. Matter of fact, I'm reminded of John the 11th chapter while Lazarus was sitting there in the grave about to die. Matter of fact, he had died. He was dead, super dead. You know, you would think that God would have showed up early, but God waited on him to be dead and stinking. You know, sometimes we want God to show up for us when the eviction notice hit our door. But sometimes he waits until the eviction notice hits the door, until your clothes are outside, and then it's raining. And then God will show up with a word that will pull you out of every pit of despair you're in. Well, I come with a word from God just like Jesus spoke to Lazarus. Come forth. You don't have to be down. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be sad. Make up in your mind that 2015 is going to be the best year of your life. Make up in your mind that whatever year it, it, it comes up, whether it be 16, 17, 18, uh, whatever year, make up in your mind that it's going to be the best year of your life because favor is going to rest upon you strong. Now, listen to me. I don't have much time. That anointing is here. It's permeating right now. There's a number on your screen. And I know you're saying, why is he so antsy? I'm excited. I'm happy because I know that this seed is getting ready to change your life forever. One word from God can do it. Listen, while that anointing is flowing, while the power of God is moving over this screen, there are exactly 40 people. Do not hesitate. Listen, I don't care. Do not hesitate. There are 40 people that the Holy Ghost is talking to you and he's challenging you at the, at, at right now while you're listening to me to put a seed of $1,000 into the soil. And I promise you something big, wonderful, amazing, exciting, and powerful is going to happen in your life. Listen, this year, terrible things are happening in America, but there's a people that are going to live by a spoken word word from the Lord. Whatever you're doing, I'm telling you, there's a number on the screen. There's a website. There's an address. Dial that number and call in now and sow your seed of $1,000. What are you sowing it for? A recovery seed, a seed of restoration that everything that was lost is being restored into your life. This is yours truly. I love you and I need you to understand this is your season to recover everything you lost. Dial that number right now. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Emmaus, two of them said, 
Recently, Pastor Benny Hinn conducted powerful miracle services at Family Christian Center in Munster, Indiana. Steve Muncy hosted this great event with the assistance of more than 60 local pastors. One of the highlights for the standing room only audience from the Chicagoland area and throughout the Midwest occurred during the first service as Pastor Benny introduced Prophet Brian Carn to minister. You have a very precious, and I do want to emphasize precious gift. Viewers of This Is Your Day have become familiar with Brian Karn as his incredible prophetic anointing has been presented during recent programs. And I say unto thee, prepare yourself for the days ahead, for now you shall begin to see my hand move, and even that thing concerning business that you desire God to favor. God said, I'm getting ready to open a door of increase into your hands, and I will cause my favor to tarry, 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 is that bass? Bass. What's your last name? Bass. All right. God's getting ready to blow your mind. This is your hour of visitation. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody say, hey. When I just touched you, the Lord said, tell, look like I heard Janet. What's your name? Janet. Lift your hands. He said, just like I ordained Michael to fight, I want you to fight, Michael. What's your name? Michael. Lift your hands. I'm looking at this spirit, and this spirit has a whole bunch of wood in his hands. I see wood. I see wood. I, huh? That's my last name. Your last name is what? Wood. Lift your hands. Stay tuned, because the prophetic word you're about to hear can radically revolutionize your life. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, my people are taking my name in vain. I said, your people? He said, yes. He said, you do it too. I said, yeah, they do it, but I don't do it, Lord. I'm super saved. I don't take your name in vain. He said, son, you and the church, they take my name in vain. I said, how? He said, what's my name? I said, Jesus. You know, Matthew 1, 21, say, for thou shalt call his name Jesus. Change. One day, when I obeyed a prophet, Hosea 12 and 13 declares, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Whenever God is getting ready to transition your life, he sends a prophet. I've heard it like this before. The difference of seasons, Brother Mike Murdoch says, the difference of seasons in your life is connected to a person. So whenever God, whenever God shifts a person's life, he connects them to the prophetic. Psalm 105, 17 says, he sent a man, even Joseph, whose feet they hurt with feathers, he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. He received one word from God, and that one word changed his life. You don't, you don't need nobody to talk to you for 2,000 hours. One word can change your life. I, 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 I told people this that a couple of months ago, maybe last year sometime, they were celebrating Apostle Hinton's birthday. And somebody got up and said, we want everybody to give $500. I say, me? You want everybody? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest. Can I be honest? Yeah. I didn't feel the Spirit tell me to give it. Didn't nothing come on me to give it. And to be honest with you, I really gave it because I knew everybody was watching me. So I had to give it. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. But it's impossible to put a seed in the ground and not get back a harvest. So this is what I do. This is what I do. This is what I do. So I, I sold a $500 seed. I give it. And I leave out and I'm riding in the car and I do this little thing that God told me to do. I heard it from this man and I do it. And when I do it, it works. I talk to money because money can hear. What? Money can hear? Yeah, money can hear. Ecclesiastes 10, 19 say it answers. 
if money answers, that means it can hear. And not only does money answer, look at somebody and say, money talks. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your I want you to catch this because the Spirit of God began to speak to me and he said, some things are going to get worse in America. But just because things get worse in the world doesn't mean it has to get worse for you. That while everybody is losing their mind, he's going to keep you in perfect peace. Isaiah 26 and 3. Because your mind is what? Stayed on him. Are y'all listening to me? Now I want you to hear me. Things are going to get worse. Now I'm, I'm going to give you this prophetic word. You may not receive this. Social security is not your source. The government is not your source. Your job is not your source. Slap your neighbor and say, God is my source. You didn't say that right. Come on, tell them, God is my source. So I'm telling you that things are going to get worse. Jobs are going to begin to fold. People that have been up in power are going to begin to come down. But there is a people that will not be affected by the world system. Because we don't live according to that system. We live according to the word of God. Which says in Philippians 4 that my God shall supply all my... Now say this with power, say more than enough. All right, I feel faith coming in the room now. Somebody in here, every debt you got, God's getting ready to pay it off. So I want you to say this with power. Come on, say more than enough. Say too much. Overflow. It's coming to my house. When? 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 Call out your address so I know where to come to. Call your name so they know who to make the check out to. Now shout like you already got it. Now listen. Now listen. My life. So I, I speak to money and I tell money, money, come to me now. Somebody say money. money. Cometh. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, that, that don't do it. That don't do it. That don't do it. Now you got to do it right. Say money. money. Cometh. Money. To me. me. Now. now. So that's what I did, right? That's what I did. And I was, on, I was in Chicago. And I had a conference I needed to pay for. A week and a half later, I was in Louisiana. And a woman walked up to me in the service and said, Prophet Khan. I said, yeah. She said, do you mind if I give you right now $50,000 cash? I said, ma'am, you never have to ask me for permission. Never, never. I was in St. Louis, Missouri. Walked up to a woman and prophesied to her and said, thus saith the Lord, I have something to tell you. But God told me this time, this is the only time he's ever told me this. I said, the Lord told me I cannot tell you until you put a seed in my hand. She said, well, how much? I said, you want the truth? She said, yeah. I said, the Lord told me to take you to give $10,000 in my hand right now. She said, well, I guess I ain't going to hear what the Lord got to say. <laughs> I said, I understand. I said, you know, you know God talks to me. She said, yeah. I said, trust me. She put the seed in my hand and I said, thus saith the Lord, the next six months will be the worst six months of your life. <laughs> she said, I need my $10,000 back then. <laughs> I said, but thus says the Lord, in the seventh month, you're coming to $13.2 million. She gave the seed. The fourth and the fifth month, it got so bad that she was living inside of a car, lost everything. Called Prophet Karn and said, hey, yeah. I said, what's up? She said, I need a cash advance on my miracle. <laughs> I 
I said to her, if I give you the money, I interrupt your process. But let me encourage you. I said, let me give you this word. If the hell I told you you was going to go through is coming to pass, the blessing got to be on the other side. Gets to the seventh month. Gets to the seventh month. Her daddy died. But her dad lived in another country. She was raised by her mother. And her mother never let her have a relationship with her father. Long story short, he shall save his people from their sins. That's his saving name. He has a lot of names, but his saving name is Jesus. Acts 4 and 12 declares, neither is there salvation in any other, other than the name of Jesus. But he said, no. I said, okay. I said, well, how about Jehovah Jireh? He said, well, read your Bible. He said, I know you call me Jehovah Jireh, but if you listen, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, which means out of every situation is a revelation of who God is. But that's not his name. I said, well, what's your name? He said, well, all the things you call out are names that people gave me. He said, but only in one place in Exodus chapter 3 is when I gave myself a name. I said, okay. I say, what did you say your name was? He said, I told Moses to tell him, I am that I am. I said, okay, that sounds good. That's real good. That's real wonderful. All right, but how in the world are we taking your name in vain because your name I am? He said, tell my people, every time you say I am sick, you take my name in vain. Every time you say, I am broke, you take his name in vain. That's why he said, let the weak say, I am. Let the poor say, I am. Now you need to shout like increase is about to come to you. Come on, shout. All right, now, sit down, sit down, sit down. We almost there, we almost there. Listen, I, I, I get excited when I think of the goodness of Jesus. When I think about what's getting ready to happen in my life, I get excited because my worst days are over and my best days are... All right, you ready? All right, now say this now. You shall have whatever you... You shall have whatever you... You shall have whatever you... All right. You are speaking spirit. Remember that now. If you don't say it, you'll never see it. you got to change the way you talk. You have to change what comes out of your mouth. I don't care what it looks like. You never say what the enemy says. You say what God said. Isaiah 53 and 5 say, but he was wounded for our transgression. Bruised by iniquities. Now. Third John do say, Beloved, 